Hi guys, Ray from Whimsical Pictures here. Remember in that video a couple months ago where I said I would do in-depth shelf tours soon? Well, it's not soon, but that's what we're here for. Today is going to be the first in a series of videos going through two of my shelves at a time uh, in more depth, kind of going over why I have the series in my collection, you know, and my, my thoughts, what the series is, etc. And yeah, uh, without further ado, I guess, today is going to be the first two shelves of my normal, I guess, standard-sized English manga. Um, they're not all entirely standard-sized. You can see these are a little taller, but basically <laughs> standard-sized. Uh, first, we have volumes one through five of Astra Lost in Space. Um... This is from the creator of Sket Dance, uh, which got an anime, like, forever ago. Um, this is a short and sweet little shonen sci-fi series about a group of kids who end up stranded in the depths of space, um, and quickly realize that the one who stranded them there is among their group. So there's a traitor in their midst, and also they are rapidly running out of resources trying to get home. Um, this series, I think, borrows a lot of inspiration from They Were Eleven by Motohagyo, uh, which is a shoujo sci-fi classic. Um, and one of my favorite manga, Motohagyo is my favorite manga ka. So anything that even vaguely reminds me of her, of course, is going to be probably in my collection, to be honest. <laughs> um, I would say if you are a fan of They Were Eleven, this is definitely worth picking up. Um, there's even some light LGBT elements that feel like a bit of an updated version of the stuff that goes on with Froll in that story. Um which is kind of nice as well. Also, that character is a bisexual king and my favorite. <laughs> um, also, you know, if you've read Astra Lost in Space and would like something else that feels similar to that, I recommend digging, digging up They Were Eleven. Actually, you don't have to dig it up now, do you? No, it got licensed. That's exciting. <laughs> Um, They Were Eleven and its sequel have been licensed by Denpa, so look forward to that, especially if you enjoyed this manga and want something else like it. Next, we have The Case Study of Vanitas, volumes one through six. This is by Jun Mochizuki, the creator of Pandora Hearts. I didn't care for Pandora Hearts all that much. But I have always been a fan of her artwork, and I don't know, I kept hearing from some friends that the case study of Vanitas was really good, um, and about vampires, which is it, honestly gonna put anything further up on my list. And I finally picked it up, and yeah, it's excellent. This is the series that I feel like I always wanted from Jun Mochizuki. Uh, she's clearly having so much fun making it, and yeah, the art is gorgeous. I love our two main characters, especially this boy here, Noah, uh, who has fabulous himbo energy, and I love him a lot. Uh, this is a dark fantasy series, I guess, steampunk, set in, like, a parallel universe version of Paris, uh, where vampires have sort of, along with a parallel dimension, vampires have been sort of 
magicked into existence. Um, next, we have volumes one through three of, whoops, Classmates, Dokyuse, and then the two volumes of Sotsugyose. Uh, the continuation of this one was also recently licensed by uh, Seven Seas, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, this series is by Asumiko Nakamura, who, again, has a really beautiful art style. Uh, this has an excellent anime movie. It's just about, you know, these two high school kids and later college kids who fall in love and start dating. Very sweet, but the there is a teacher character who is on the spine right here, who makes it more difficult for me to recommend this series uh, and kind of sours it in my mind uh, because he's incredibly creepy and does not have the boundaries that he needs to have as a um, caretaker of children, teenagers. Um, and that bothers me. <laughs> But the core romance between these two boys is really good. Yeah. Um, Devil's Line, volumes 8 through 14. I have volumes 1 through 7 at in America, in my collection in America. Um, so this is complete. This is another vampire story. And it is one of my favorite manga, actually. Um, yeah, this is incredibly good, really good, like, government conspiracy story, really good paranormal romance, uh, really good cop procedural, and surprisingly progressive politics in this one as well. A very diverse cast, um, in terms of both race and ethnicity, and, um, sexuality. So, uh, I, I highly recommend that one. Not enough people read it. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, don't watch the anime. The anime is uh, <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> uh, then we have volumes one to three of Given. Um, this is a BL manga published by Sublime. I watched the anime first. For this and I absolutely loved it. Excellent, excellent BL anime about a band. Um, I just I just love these kids so much. I love the two main boys in high school and I love the two college boys as well and their mess. <laughs> uh, this series deals very maturely with grief and overcoming the death of a loved one. Um, overcoming as well relationships that have become stale or toxic. Um, really, really good series. Looking forward to more. On to the next shelf. Whoop. Sliding over in my chair. <laughs> Uh, next, we've got Go For It Nakamura, which is a one-shot BL volume. Uh, this is very, very sweet. It's just about this boy, Nakamura. I, I feel like the cover gives you a pretty good idea. There. Um, this boy, Nakamura, who is gay and has a crush on his classmate here, who... Like, Nakamura is just incredibly, incredibly shy, <laughs> so his greatest dream in life is just to talk to this boy and become his friend, and this volume is just the hijinks that he goes through towards that end, and it's very, very sweet. Uh, it's nice to have, you know, a character who has already come out to himself, is already very much aware that he is, yes, definitely gay. <laughs> so gay. <laughs> he, 
he even questions at one point um if he might be bi instead of gay but he never once questions that he is attracted to men uh and that's nice i think this is a great starting point if you haven't read any bl before because it's short it's sweet it's got this very attractive almost retro art style and there's absolutely no r-rated content um or weird tropes whatsoever it's just cute Next, we have Go With the Clouds North by Northwest, Volumes 1 to 4 by Aki Irie. Um, This one is one that I am thinking about letting go of. I do enjoy it a lot. Um, it's a really gorgeous series. Yeah, I just opened to a good page there. Uh, it's about this kid who is half Icelandic and half Japanese, um, who lives in Iceland and takes on odd jobs, usually involving his car, because he has this unique ability to communicate with machinery. Um, and there's also a, an ongoing mystery with his brother Michitaka, who seems to have some things going on with him and possibly some supernatural characteristics of his own. Uh, but this is, you know, just as much as it is a uh, mystery series, kind of an, a thriller, I guess, uh, it is also a travelogue about how awesome Iceland is and... Honestly, I think I am more interested by the travelogue elements than I am by the thriller. Um, especially the most recent volume, just, I don't know, I did not get the impression the thriller aspect was going towards anything interesting or unique, whereas the setting of Iceland and Aki Irie's art is really gorgeous, and I just kind of want to live in it forever. So, yeah, I'm... Um, We'll see. We'll see. I might give it another volume. I might not. But I do love EDA's art. I just wish that I could find a series that agreed with me from him. Next we have volume one, volume zero, I guess, of um, Kageki Shoujo, The Curtain Rises. So this is a prologue to the longer Kageki Shoujo series, which has fortunately been licensed by Seven Seas, and we will be getting it. I don't remember when the first volume is set to come out. Uh, this is about a girl named Sarasa here, who um, has managed to get into the illustrious, the prestigious, Incredibly difficult to get into, Koka Musical Theater Academy, um, which is very much an obvious analog for the Takarazuka Music School, um, leading into the all-female musical theater review company, Takarazuka Review. And yeah, uh, this is getting an anime later this year, and it does deal with some difficult topics, such as um, eating disorders, as well as uh, childhood sexual assault comes up, and child abuse. Um, stalkers, as well. One of the characters is an ex-idol. Um, but, yeah, uh, as someone who has recently fallen deep, deep, deep into the well of the rabbit hole of Takarazuka. Um, I <laughs> love this series, and I'm really excited for more. And I'm excited for the anime as well. Uh, next we have Killing Me. It says volume one, but this is the only volume we've ever gotten, so it can be considered a one-shot. Um, it's a, like, romantic comedy between a vampire hunter and a vampire. It's cute. I don't have much to say about that one. Uh, Liquor and Cigarettes by Ranma Rosaria. 
Um, if you know the name Ron Marizaria, you know she is good at drawing smut. <laughs> um, but she's into some crazy stuff. So this is my favorite work from hers, as it is the most, I guess, <laughs> kosher. <laughs> uh, it's about a guy who runs a liquor store and a guy who runs a cigarette store across from each other in Italy. And uh, it's basically they start doing this like trial dating thing while the guy running the liquor store is trying to figure out his sexuality and how he feels about his childhood friend. And, um, you know, obviously at the end they get together for real. And leading up to that, there's just a lot of really hot sex. <laughs> um, but it's sweet. I like both of the boys very much, and this was very enjoyable. Magician at uh, bleh, bleh. Magician A by Natsuko Ishitsuyo. This I helped kickstart. Um, it's a collection of short stories. This uh, is the personal translation baby of um, Jocelyn Allen, who is a translator that I respect a lot. Um, it's a obviously an alternative manga collection um, of short stories that have to do mostly with teenage girls navigating their feelings about sexuality and romance and being a young woman in society and particularly in a society that very much hates teenage girls. Um, it was interesting. I really enjoyed the interview at the end as well. She seems like an interesting person. Uh, Mr. Minimart is a one-shot BL volume by Junko. Um, Junko, you might know from series like Kiss Him, Not Me, and Starcrossed, I think, is her new one. Um, I really like this one. It was one of the first BL I think I ever read, and it's just a very sweet story about a kid who became a neat after uh, getting bullied at school and forcibly outed, um, who's just sort of trying to enter back into society and move past this traumatic event that's happened to him. So he gets a job at a convenience store and sort of the budding romance between him and a co-worker there. Uh, it's a very cute, very short, sweet, and supportive, happy, puts a smile on my face. Love it. We have Our Dining Table. This is also a BL one-shot. This one was excellent. Um, it's about two adult men who, um, one of them has a very young, younger brother that he's taking care of. And they sort of start, I don't know, they become friends and are having, like, dinner together at one of their houses. And, you know, they sort of help each other through some trauma that the two of them are dealing with. And through that, uh, they find each other, they find love, and it's very sweet and made me cry. Our Dreams at Dusk. Uh, volumes 1 through 4, Complete, also known as Shimanami Tasogare. This is by Yuki Kamatani. I feel like everyone's talked to death about this series. I'm a big fan of Yuki Kamatani. I have done a podcast episode about uh, this creator with my friend G over on her channel, Collecting G. Simply G. I'll link it below. Um, where we did go in-depth into our thoughts about them as a creator, so I recommend checking that out uh, if you want to know more thoughts. But this is excellent. I think everyone should read it. Our Teachers Are Dating, Volume 1. Um, it's a really cute Yuri series. 
about a, I think, gym teacher and school nurse who are dating. <laughs> and everyone in the school knows it, and all the students are super supportive, and all the teachers are super supportive, and the principal's super supportive, and they love each other very much, and, um, yeah, it's just pure escapist fluff, and I enjoy it very much. Next we have Satoko and Nada, volumes two through four. I have volume one, but it's in America, so this is complete. Um, this is about a exchange student from Japan uh, who is studying abroad in America, and her roommate is a girl from Saudi Arabia, and just like, I don't know, their adventures as exchange students in America, meeting peop other people in America, getting to know each other, and the sort of cultural exchange between them. Obviously, the focus is more so on Satoko learning about Nada's culture than the other way around, but there are lots of cute moments of, like, cultural exchange and, you know, just, you know, we're all the same humans, just different different flavors, and it's, it's very wholesome. I enjoyed it a lot. Made me remember uh, some of my early study abroad experiences. <laughs> Scarlet. Volumes 1 to 2 complete. Uh, this is, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, exactly what it says on the tin, basically. It's, uh, vampire, werewolf, yuri, they're, like, Grimm's fairy tales narcotics officers. Um, and it's trashy as heck, but I <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> Next, we have Spy Family, Volumes 2 and 3 by Tatsuya Endo. I am having a heck of a time finding Volume 1, but um, I'll get it eventually. This is excellent. <laughs> it's so wholesome and cute. I feel like I don't have to explain the premise. Um, it's a Shonen Jump series. Jump Plus? I don't remember what it runs in, but it's just so wonderful. I love the core members of the family, all of them, and I laugh out loud so much during every volume of this series. I just, I just want to hug this series. I just want to give it a big hug. <laughs> and then we have Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart, uh, which is also by Shunde, who did go for it, Nakamura, here. But it is, you can tell from the cover, a very different kind of series. This is a horror one-shot, and it covers all its bases. There is a lot going on in this volume, so if you are... I guess I don't really want to spoil the story here, but I will toss uh, the triggers that are in this into the description below if you need them. Um, but it is hard to explain what happens in this. There's, it's a ghost story about a man who did some horrible things in the past who has come back to haunt the present. Uh, and things go from there. And it is really excellent, but it is very dark and disturbing. Um, definitely a different vibe from Go For It Nakamura. Uh, but if you like Japanese ghost stories, um, I recommend this a lot. And yeah, those are the first two shelves. See you next time for shelves three and four.